My name's Colin Castle, I'm 50 years old. I um, live at Narengba, which is a suburb just north of Brisbane. I, I live here with my wife and my son. My daughter's moved out recently. This is like our oasis. Um, we, we enjoy the solitude of our block, which is great. Um, we've got four chickens and a dog that we've, it's about four months old. My journey through leukaemia started in 2010. Uh, I originally I was giving blood at the Red Cross uh, and one day they discovered that my iron was a bit low. So that led me to having ongoing blood tests every three months. Uh, and during those blood tests, the doctor at the time picked up that my white blood cells and my lymphocyte count started starting to increase. Um, he thought at that time I might have been sick and fighting something off, but as it turns out I wasn't. Um, and they continued to rise and then it got to a point where he referred me to the haematologist and um, the haematologist then had a further look at the bloods and came up with a diagnosis that I had what's called CLL which is chronic lymphocytic leukaemia. Um, it's a longer term type of leukaemia so it's, it's not one that you need treatment immediately it's one that uh, you may live with for a long time um, or may not need any treatment at all. So the diagnosis at the time was let's uh, watch and wait uh, and pretty much try to live a healthy lifestyle and we'll just keep checking every six months. When I got diagnosed, uh, it sort of didn't really dawn on me that I had what was you know, cancer and it's, it's not something that I still really think about to this day. I didn't share the news with uh, many people at all. I didn't tell my family, um, I didn't tell my friends. Uh, it was something I thought, I don't really want people to be worrying about me. Uh, um, and I didn't, it may never amount to anything. So I thought, well, I'll just sort of keep, keep it to ourselves for the time being, my wife and I. And it wasn't until I'd come, be coming up on my six month visits to the haematologist that I'd actually start to think about it on a, on a daily basis but most of the days I just would go through living life normally and not, not thinking about it. Once I got the diagnosis I tried to live a bit more health, healthily, uh, tried to go to the gym but that all changed uh, in 2018 when um, my blood levels started to escalate quite significantly. I went had a blood test and the levels had uh, escalated um, three or four fold uh, from, from the rate that they'd been growing. Uh, and that, that uh, um, made my haematologist quite concerned. And it was at that time that I started really to focus on my health quite significantly. It was probably a little bit late, but I, I cut out my, my drinking for about six months and, and lost about 10 kilos during that time, which was quite significant. It wasn't until September 2019 that I actually started noticing some other changes within my body. Um, I noticed that the glands under my arm and in my neck started to start swelling um, and got to a point where it was quite noticeable visibly if you were looking at me or if I was sleeping at night under my arms that it was quite um, aching and painful. At the time, I was feeling a bit nervous about the whole chemotherapy thing. Um, I've, I'd heard and read um, stories of how uncomfortable it can be for people and, and uh, painful or um, traumatic. So that, that was something I wasn't looking forward to. One point I did think, well, it's been nearly eight years I've been living with this. Hopefully, if I go through the treatment, I'll be able to knock this on the head and just start moving on with my life. So from one aspect, I was a bit nervous. On the other side, I was actually looking forward just to making some progress at last, because after eight years of sitting there watching and waiting, it starts to play on your mind a little bit. Uh, and you start to think, okay, uh, when is this cancer going to actually start coming? Is it ever going to start coming? Uh, Am I going to have a long life? Am I going to have a shorter life? Uh, am, am I going to see my grandkids? That type of thing. So I think it starts to influence some of the things you do in your life, some of the decisions you make. On my first day, um, it, it was pretty much just stepping me through the process, uh, letting me know what type of side effects I might have uh, from the treatment. Um, just checking on me very carefully throughout the day uh, in case things were starting to change in my body or how I was feeling. Um, but thankfully, um, in, in the first round of treatment, uh, I didn't have any side effects other than a little bit of nausea. 
um, and managed to get through uh, that first round pretty good. Um, my treatment went for six rounds, so every four weeks, three days every four weeks for uh, six rounds. As my treatment progressed, uh, my symptoms started to get more pronounced, uh, started to um, get a lot of nausea um, and vomiting uh, for about one week out of the four. Thankfully, I, I didn't lose my hair and I didn't have any other uh, significant side effects. My taste changed um, and smells um, would, would trigger the nausea. So just things like opening a drawer and smelling uh, the, the closed in uh, smell of a drawer or a cupboard would just set me off. Thankfully, the side effects weren't that bad and I really uh, can't complain that that was the worst I had. If I had to talk to somebody that was about to go through it, uh, I would say try to keep a positive outlook and, and that's something I tried to do the whole way through and I still try to do it today. If you try to look forward to life after a treatment, I think that's the way to approach it. If somebody offers help or support, to take them up on that offer because I think people genuinely want to help. When I told everyone my news, uh, I was amazed at the support I got. Um, just just uh, people that I weren't that close to reaching out to me more than they probably would have in the past. I did have a friend who did a world's greatest shave for me as a fundraiser. Managed to shave off and raise it nearly $1,000 for the Leukemia Foundation. I do have a very good bunch of friends that were incredibly supportive. My wife was uh, amazing uh, in terms of doing the things that I couldn't do, especially on the weeks that I was um, pretty much bedridden. Uh, so supportive from that angle. Emotionally, um, my, my family have always been very supportive for me. and. We're very fortunate for that. I waited about four weeks after my last treatment before I had to do some more tests. I had another scan, another bone marrow biopsy, another set of blood tests. And uh, those results all came back uh, with uh, nil uh, instance of the CLL or the cancer in my system. So nothing was able to be detected. So I guess in that instance, I'm, I'm classed as being in remission. Um, the thing will never go away, it'll always be there, um, but at the moment there's no presence of it in my body, so which I'm very, very happy about and very grateful for. Uh, for me, it's trying to get life back to normal um, and just starting to do the things that I really wasn't able to do for the last six months while I was going through treatment. Having this illness has certainly changed my outlook on life. Um, I, I'm not planning too far into the future, trying to live for today, um, trying to do the things we want to do, uh, enjoy the moments that we have with friends and our family. And that's probably the most important thing for me.